to break that sword. I'd be willing to do. Take my houses and all my lands. Change all my schemes and all my plans. If that would draw me closer to you, for whatever it takes to be more like you. That's what I'd be willing to do. I trade sunshine for rain, comfort for pain. That's what I'd be willing. Whatever it takes to be more like you, Lord, that's what I'd be willing to do. And oh, that's what I'd be willing to I know that I'm speaking to those of like precious faith. We have all had to turn our back on the world in order to serve our God. Today I want to direct our attention to the book of Psalms 137. And when you find it, I'm just going to ask you to stand with me for the reading of the word. I'm going to be reading from verse 1 on to verse 6. Psalms 137. Reading from verse 1 on to verse 6. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to his, the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray your blessing upon these words as I would share from them, Lord. Let the hearts of your people be challenged once again. We want to hear from you, Lord, the God of our creation, the God of our salvation. So move me out of the way, Lord, and let Jesus Christ alone be seen and glorified. For we ask it in his name and for his sake. Amen. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? This 
is the challenge that confronts us in this world. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? It's one thing to sing God's song in a familiar place to familiar faces or to smiling faces, but another thing to sing God's song in a strange land to frowning faces or to unfriendly faces. As I look at the text today, it was Memorial Day for the children of Judah who had been taken captive into the land of Babylon. Memorial Day. But it was a sad day for them, a tearful day. For the Bible says here that by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. They wept because they sensed that they would not see their beloved city of Jerusalem again. But though they wept, they, they were determined to keep the memory of that city alive in their mind as long as they lived. They were determined that they would not forget Jerusalem no matter what it cost them. For they, they, this word is, this is what they said. They said, um, if, how, um, if I forget, verse 5, oh, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. It's Memorial Day for this great nation of America. All over the land, there are people today who are determined to keep alive the memories of those who paid the ultimate price for the freedom we now enjoy as a result of those who died to secure it. Man, this, you know, um, Brother Tom said to me, man, a whole lot of blood was shed so that we, this country could be the country that it is today. But for many who celebrate this day, it will be a tearful day. For many will, will weep because of that loved one, that father, that son, that brother, that husband, that daughter, that mother, that sister who paid the ultimate price, they will not be at the table today. They're gone. The tears that will be shed, will be, yes, there will be tears of, of sorrow, but also tears of gratitude on the part of a nation that will determine for their memories to live on, regardless of the cost. I thank God that I had the privilege of serving these United States of America in a time of war. 1966, I enlisted. I was in the Air Force in the time of the Vietnam War. And I'm glad I did. For four years, I served this nation. The Bible tells us that these captives that were seated by the rivers of Babylon asked the question, they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They felt it impossible on their behalf, on their part, to sing God's song in a strange land in light of what they had suffered, in light of the trauma they had been through as a people in light of all the distress that had come upon them, they felt that it was not possible for them to do so. The Lord's song is a glad song. 
The Lord's song is a song of praise and thanksgiving, a song of rejoicing, a song that is happy. And this was a song that their captives required of them. Sing us one of the Lord's songs. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. To these captives, it was like as if someone was pouring salt into their wound. It was as if someone had physically abused you and misused you. And in, in the midst of your pain and your grief, then they say to you, sing us a happy song. They say, we, how can we praise God for where we are? How can we praise God for what is happening to us? This was their testimony that day. The Bible said, they said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. And I don't know if there's anyone here today that's going through one of these by the rivers of Babylon experience in that you feel you're like in a strange land today. It's like that your home has become like a foreign land to you, that home that was once so peaceful and tranquil now is no longer that place of tranquility, in that there is a, a division in that house. There, it may be that, that, that spouse that once said to you, I do, I, 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 as, until death do us part. For better or worse, I'm going to serve you. That, that, that spouse that once sang, I can't take my eyes off of you, has now had become strange to you in that they, 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 there's a chill in the atmosphere. That relationship that was once so close has now somewhat drifted apart. There is a, it's, your home has become like a strange land in terms of the children that once loved and respected you, now they're, they're like acting strange to you. They, they are rebellious. They don't want to hear anymore. Your, land, that land, your life may be going through that one of those Babylon experiences in that you, your life is now feeling, you're in a strange land. You're hearing from the doctor that you got something that they can't find a cure for. Financially, you're going through, a, a, you're in, like in a strange land. You can't meet your financial obligations. You are at that point where you are about to be like the tune of Babylon, where you're sitting by that river and, and, and the floodgate is about to be opened. The tears are welling up within you. You're about to give yourself over to despair. But all of a sudden, in that strange land, you hear that still small voice of God saying, Praise Him anyhow. <laughs> Hallelujah! Anyhow. Never let your troubles get you down. When dark trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. You know, as I look at this text today, I cannot help but wonder before they hung, when they said, How shall we praise the Lord in a strange land? Before they hung their harps upon the willows thereof. If they had first given thought to this one thing, what will our legacy be in this strange land? What memorial will we leave behind for those who will follow us? I think that would have been a relevant question because you see, my friend, they were not in that strange land for just a brief stay. They would not be in that strange land for just a moment, of, for just a, a few days. They would be there for 70 long years of their life. God had made it clear to them that they were going to be there for 70 years. And in the course of those 70 years, they would leave behind a legacy. They would leave behind a memorial that would determine how their children would respond to God in their hour of distress, in their day of adversity. They were their role models. And they were going to leave behind a legacy, man. And those children one day grew up to be just like their father. The way they treated God in that strange land would be the same way that they too treated God. I wonder if they'd ask themselves a the question. And my friend, let, us, let me say today, we are in a strange land. And we're only here for time. And we don't know when that time is going to run out. But before you leave this world, before I leave this world, we're going to leave a legacy based upon our actions that will determine how people think about us when we're gone, that even will determine how our children or our descendants will act towards God and the people around us. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I want to say that this was a question that God had anticipated on their behalf before they got to that strange land. Because as we look at Jeremiah 29, it is 
clear to us that God made it clear to them how they could sing the Lord's song in a strange land and why they should sing the Lord's song in a strange land in spite of their trauma. Because in Jeremiah 29, the Bible says here, the word of God makes it clear to us that they could sing that song, the Lord's song in a strange land. And that they should sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But in order to sing God's song in that strange land, they had to be conformed. They had to be in conformity to the sovereign will and purpose of God for their lives. That they could not sing that song unless they were in submission to God's will. Because, my friend, when we look at this text, it is only because... They were not in that strange land by accident, by chance. They were not there by a mere coincidence, but they were there because God willed for them to be there. This is made clear to us in the God's letter to the, the children of Israel by Jeremiah. For the Bible says in chapter 29, verse 4, God is speaking out. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. God said, I did it. You are where I want you to be. In other words, they were in the perfect will of God for their life in spite of how uncomfortable the place was, in spite of, how, in spite of all their discomforts, in spite of all their trauma, in spite of all their distress. They were in the center of God's will for their life. And they should have sung the Lord's song if they knew this. Because, my friend, the will of God will never lead his people to a place where the grace of God will not keep us. You see, my friend, they should have sung us a, 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 a glad song in the land of Babylon. Because, you see, when they took their journey to Babylon, in that hot sun, in that, along that dust road, God took that journey with them. They didn't take that journey alone. God was with them every step of the way. And as they journeyed on that road to Babylon, he was saying to them, I got your back. I got your back. Trust me. No matter what awaits you, I got your back. You see, this was a memorial day for these children of Israel as they journeyed to Babylon because this is the, they were a people in a covenant relationship with God. And God was letting them know that he was the same God. It was a memorial day of memorial because he was that same God who had led their father through the wilderness in a strange land, no maps, no roads, as a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. He was, it was their memorial. God was letting them know, look, I had their backs because in that wilderness they were fiery serpents and scorpions, he said, but I took them through. And my friend, he said, their feet never got swollen, their shoes never waxed old, neither did their clothes. He said, I am the God that, that secures you. You could sing my song in a strange land because you're not alone. You see, God wanted them to be motivated. You see, my friend, if there's anybody who sang the Lord's song in a strange land, it was Paul. Paul knew how to sing God's song in a strange land. But in order for him to sing the Lord's song in a strange land, he had to be in Christ. He couldn't do it in his flesh. It would be too, it would be impossible. So Paul said one day, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And he, when he really, he was in a strange land. This is something that never happened to Paul before. He was experiencing something that was totally new, a strange land. He said, when he, when he, in that strange land, it's as if he asked himself, how can I sing the Lord's song in this strange land? This thing is getting the better of me. And he cried out to the Lord and said, take it away from me, three times. But then God gave him an answer. You know what God said to him? I got your back. I'm with you. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul, I got your back. And when Paul realized that God got his back, he said, gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmity. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I can sing the Lord's song in a strange land, regardless of what I'm going through. 
regardless of what trials come my way. And I need to know what the time is here is in America. What time is it, Brother Allen? How much time I got left? <laughs> five to five minutes? Folks, you got to come to Jamaica to hear the man of this message. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. God, this is one of them four points. Message. Well, let me say this to you. He's got your back. He's saying you can sing the Lord's song in that stream, but he makes it clear that in order for us to sing that song, we must do it in Christ. For the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You see, my friend, God wants everybody in this world to sing the Lord's song, but only those who have the assurance of salvation can sing the Lord's song in a strange land. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. And friend, I'm so sorry that I don't have another hour to be with you today. <laughs> But I want to say, whatever you're going through, no matter how distressing the situation may be, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God is saying, you can sing. You know, when I drove that cabin, I think I got about two minutes left. When I drove that cabin in New York City, one night the Lord said to me, can you sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Can you tell everybody gets, who gets in and out of your cab that Jesus is Lord and witness to them? And God said, you can. Because you're in the will of God, the perfect will of God. All you need to do is let the Holy Spirit take over. And for eight of 14 years driving a yellow cab in New York City, everyone who got in that cab for 12 hours a night, I got the cab at five in the afternoon and to five in the morning. Once they got in my cab, I shared the gospel. I was threatened. I was told that by people, I'm, you need to shut up. They're going to hurt me. But I kept singing the Lord's song. I wasn't intimidated by them because God was with me. And I saw in that cab many people come to Christ. But God showed me that in order to sing that song, I had to be convicted. I had to be a man that was in conviction to the word of God. I had to know that he had said to me, Bob, deny yourself. Take up that cross and follow me. You can be more your name. All these things, you're more than a conqueror. So, folks, let me say this to you. I don't know what you're going through. Some of you may feel you're in a strange land right now. Everything's looking strange all around us. But the God you serve is a God who never changes. The memorial tells us that he is the God who gives you power to overcome, no matter what you're going through. So you can sing the Lord's song in a strange land. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and stand and grab your neighbor by the hand. You may feel like you're in a strange land today, but, but do not let God be a strange God to you. Hallelujah. Amen. And do not be a stranger to God. You may feel like you're in a strange land, maybe because uh, you, have, you have wandered away from Him. Uh, you have gone away from God. You're saved, you're born again, but you've wandered away from Him. Um, make a decision today. Amen. You're going you're gonna to be part of what God is doing through his body in this world. Amen. And maybe you, maybe you feel like you're in a strange land because you do not know him yet as your Savior. Mm. You know what? Uh, just uh, every head bowed, every eye closed, and, and every Christian pray. But if you're not yet born again, all you have to do is pray and say, God, save me for Jesus' sake. He died on the cross for your sins. He was the substitute in your place. God does not force that on you, but he offers it to you. He even offers it today to just say, Jesus, I trust you for eternal life. And if you do that, come up afterwards. Let me know. Let, let Brother Bob know. Um, I, I have a small booklet I have written on next steps for new believers. I want to give you a copy. Father, we thank you today for the ministry of your word. We thank you for Brother Bob Weston, Lord, for the, the ministry he has uh, in Jamaica and the ministry he has here in the States and other places across this globe. Father, I pray you continue to bless him. Uh, Lord, help us be a support to him. Father, we pray that you would give us, uh, Lord, a, a good holiday with family and friends. And Lord, oh Lord, that all of us would have that commitment that whoever came into our presence... That we, would, that we would get the gospel to them, that we would be open for the Holy Spirit just opening a door somehow, some way, uh, to tell them the good news that Christ died for their sins. 
Uh, Father, we pray, use us even this week in that way, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen.